Hey everybody, welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. It's August, and you know what that means. It's time for another addition to our 2017 calendar square blanket. And this month, we are going on a road trip. <laughs> We've made a travel trailer inside this month's block, and I couldn't be more delighted with it. I went with a whole vintage feel. I love that 1950s vintage travel trailer. They're so cute. So I decided to make this one pink and white with a little bit of gray trim. We're gonna build it from the inside out, and I'm gonna take you through it row by row, stitch by stitch, just like I do all the other blocks. You want the same yarn that you've used for all your other calendar squares and the same border color, same hook size too. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table and make ourselves up the August calendar blanket square. In order to make our travel trailer squares, you're going to need a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I-9, that's the hook we're using. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using worsted weight acrylic yarn. So it's the same yarn type and size that I've been using for all my other squares. You're going to need approximately 15 grams each of your background color, so for me that's blue, and your white color. So this, I've been using white as my border, I'm also using it as the other half of my travel trailer. So you need 15 grams of that. 10 grams of the bottom half of your travel trailer color and the outline. So for me, I'm using a dark gray and you need a very small amount of black so we can put a little wheel on it. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with the bottom half of our trailer. So you want to grab your trailer color. I used pink in my first one and today I'm going to use this mint. We're going to make a slip knot. and chain 23. Once you've chained 23, you're going to count backwards from the hook, one, two, three, four, five chains. So find the fifth chain from the hook and you're going to double crochet into it. So you've got a chain three coming out of a chain, that counts as one double crochet, that's two double crochet, you're going to double crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning and at the end of this row, including your chains on the end, you're going to have 20 double crochet. You should have 20 double crochets including your chains at the end. We're going to chain three. That chain three counts as a double crochet for row two. Turn your work. Remember that this little stitch here with the chain three coming out of it is already used because this chain three counts as a double crochet. So you don't use this stitch, you use the next one. And you're gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Don't forget the top of that chain three at the end of your row. And you should still have 20 double crochets including your turning chain of three. I'm just nearing the end of row two. There's my chain three. I'm gonna find the top of it, double crochet into it. That's my 20th stitch for row two. And row three, we're gonna repeat row two. Chain three, turn your work. This counts as a double crochet, so don't use that stitch, it's already used. And double crochet in each stitch across, including the top of that chain three at the end. And you should still have 20 stitches. At the end of row three, you should still have 20 stitches, including your chain three at the beginning. And make sure you put a double crochet into that top of the chain three from the previous row. Now you can snip your yarn, fasten off, and you can take a moment and weave in your short tails if you like, or you can work over top of them. Either way, you wanna flip your work, and now you wanna grab your dark gray color, We're going to make a slip knot, and just so I can show you what we're doing here, we've completed this bottom part of the trailer, and now we're going to put in this little narrow edge between the two colors. So that's the color you want, your dark gray. You're going to join with a slip stitch in the same place that you fastened off your last color. Chain one, 
single crochet in the same stitch and now you're going to single crochet in each stitch across and by the time you get to the end you should still have 20 stitches but they'll be single crochets you're going to work your 20th single crochet into the top of that chain 3 at the end of the row you can snip your yarn and fasten off I didn't leave myself very much tail here but I don't need it nice little tight knot you can weave in your short tail or work over top of it again just like I did flip your work and now we're going to start the upper part of the trailer so for me that's white so grab the upper part of your trailer color I'm using white we're going to make a slip knot you're going to join your yarn in the same stitch that you just fastened off and I like to try and knock down some of my tails join with a slip stitch and we're back to double crochet for a little while so chain three to begin this chain three counts as a double crochet and you can double crochet into each stitch across and you'll still have 20 stitches at the end of row five at the end of row five you should have 20 stitches including the chain three that you began with and now we're going to repeat rows two and three for rows six and seven so you're going to chain three to begin each of the next two rows turn your work remember that that stitch is already accounted for because your chain three counts as a double crochet double crochet in each stitch across across including the top of that chain three at the end and you're going to repeat for row number seven you should still have 20 stitches and that includes your chain threes we're at the end of row seven you should still have 20 stitches all the way across that includes your chain three and make sure that you work your last double crochet into the top of the turning chain or the chain three from the previous row so 20 stitches in every single row now we're going to shape the top of our little camper we're going to chain one turn our work and we're going to work a series of up and down stitches we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches half double crochet in the next two stitches double crochet in the next four stitches we're going to treble crochet in the next four stitches remember that's two wraps to begin and now we're going to reverse double crochet in the next four stitches double crochet in the next two stitches and then single crochet in the last two stitches and remember one of them your last stitch is going to be the top of that turning chain so find the top of that turning chain and single crochet into it and that is row eight you should still have 20 stitches and the top of your camper now does has a little bit of a a nice rounded top to it we're not finished yet we're still going to do one more row of our white or our top camper color we're going to chain one turn our work we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches half double crochet in the next four stitches double crochet in the next eight stitches
half double crochet in the next four stitches. That should leave you with two stitches and you're going to single crochet into them. Then you can snip your yarn and fasten off. All right, the body of our little camper is done, but now we want to add this pretty little border just to give it a nice little outline. So you want to grab your dark gray color again, take your travel trailer, turn it over. We're going to make a slip knot and you're going to join that in the same stitch that you fastened off in. Join with a single crochet and now you're going to single crochet across the entire top of your little trailer. When you get to the last stitch in that row, you're going to work two single crochets into it. So this is a corner, a corner stitch and we're working two single crochets into it. Now we're going to turn our work and single crochet down the raw edge. You want to work a total of 14 stitches down this edge. So this is how I break it down. These are double crochets and I like to work two in each double crochet. So that would be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That leaves one more in the edge of the gray and one more in the edge of this little white uh, row up here and that is a total of 14. So there's one in that one two in each of your double crochets and one in the gray and that will give you 14 stitches all the way down your raw edge. And you can work those stitches just by picking up a piece of the edge of the stitch. It doesn't have to be the whole thing or a double. You just want to try and make sure you've grabbed a piece of the stitch so that your your single crochet is anchored well. And you want 14 of them. So that's 14 single crochet down your first raw edge. That brings you to the bottom of your foundation chain row. So here's that first chain. Remember there was a chain four at the end because we double crocheted into the fifth chain from the hook. So if you worked two single crochets across what would be a chain three, that should leave you with one more down here. You're going to work two single crochets into that little chain at the bottom corner. And then you're going to work a single crochet into each of the foundation chain undersides all the way across. The last chain in that row will be where your little tail is. If you didn't weave it in, this is where you started with your slip knot to begin the whole thing. Work two single crochet into that last chain because that is a corner stitch and that turns a little corner and that leaves us with the other side to work up. We're going to do 14 single crochets up this side as well, working two across the side of each double crochet, one in that gray stitch row, two more across those double crochets and just fit one in here somewhere and then we're going to single crochet into the same stitch that we joined in. So like I said, just try and grab a little piece of the edge of those stitches and you want to have 14 up that side. All right, you should have 14 stitches, so that doesn't count your two on the bottom. You should have 14 stitches up the end and then when you get up to the top, you're going to work one more single crochet into that same stitch that you joined your gray yarn with. So that was row 10. That's the border row. Before you fasten off by joining, I want you to take a moment and count all of your stitches all the way around your border row. You should have 72 exactly. If you've got 72, you can join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet that you joined your border color with and fasten off. You don't need much tail. and you can weave in your ends.
right, we have finished the main body of our little camper trailer, and now we're going to work on the background color. So I'm going to grab my blue. You want to grab whatever color is going to be your background. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And very important, not only did you have 72 stitches running all the way around your border row, I've woven in my little short tail across the back, but you can see that this is where I, I fastened off. There's my little knot. And I have two little single crochets in that corner there. And there's the knot where I fastened off. You're going to join your yarn in this stitch, but we're going to use the back loops only for this row. So there's the whole stitch, and you can see it running across my needle. What you want is the back loop which is the furthest loop away from you. So only one of them. You can join your yarn with a slip stitch in that back loop. And it's going to pull up a little bit, so that's exactly what you should see. You should see. Not a big deal. We're going to chain four to begin. And this chain four counts as a half double crochet, chain two. And here we go. Working back loops only, we are going to double crochet into the next five stitches using only the back loops. So that's the furthest loop away from you. We're going to half double crochet into the next eight, and remember it's only the back loops. We're going to double crochet into the next five back loops only. Alright, so we joined with a slip stitch, chain four, that counts as a half double crochet, chain two. We double crocheted into the first five, half double crocheted into the next eight, and double crocheted into the next five. That pretty much brings you all the way across the top of the little camper. We're going to chain two now. This is a corner space. You should be right into those two single crochets that sit in the corner stitch, so this is the first of them. We're still working back loops. We're going to half double crochet into that first back loop. Half double crochet. And then you're going to single crochet into the next 16 stitches running down this row. But you're only using the back loops. So single crochet into the next 16 back loops only. That 16th single crochet should land you on the first of those two single crochets that are worked into the corner stitch of the previous row. So the first back loop. Now you're going to half double crochet into the next back loop only. Chain two. And we're across the bottom of our little travel trailer now. Into the next 18 stitches you're going to treble crochet. So remember that's two wraps around your hook. And we're still using the back loops only, so that's the loop furthest away from you. You want to treble crochet into each of the next 18 stitches. Back loops only. That 18th treble crochet should bring you right up to those two single crochets you worked into the corner stitch on your previous row. You're going to chain two. So this is going to get us out of the bottom. Half double crochet into the next back loop. And that's going to turn us around the corner. And now you're going to single crochet into the next 16 back loops only. So we're back down to single crochet and that should take us all the way home. Sixteen single crochets later should bring you right back up to the corner. Don't be confused by your little knot if you've got like something that looks like it's between your two stitches. There's your two stitches in the corner. 
This little thing is your fasten off knot, so just ignore it. Find the second chain that you chained up for when you began, the second one, and slip stitch to it. And now you're going to lay it down. You're going to find your four chain two corners. Put your fingers and your thumbs in them and just pull it out a little bit. We have started to square up our little travel trailer. Very important, I want you to take a moment and you should be able to count 18 stitches between each chain two corner. So you've got four chain two corners and you should have 18 stitches down each side across the top and bottom and you should still have 72 stitches in total and then four chain two spaces. So take a moment and double count. Okay, everybody take a breath. The hard stuff is done. <laughs> We're gonna slip stitch into that chain two space. And now we are gonna work two whole rows of double crochet. So if you've done the other calendar squares with me, these rows will be very familiar. We're gonna chain three to begin. This counts as a double crochet. We're in a corner space, so we wanna complete it with another double crochet. Chain two and work two more double crochets into that same chain two space. So every chain two space gets two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Then make sure you can see that stitch, the top of that stitch. You're gonna work a double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So double crochet into each stitch and into each chain two corner, work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. At the end of this row, you'll have 88 stitches and four chain two corner spaces. And I'll see you there. All right, we're at the end of row 12 here. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that you began row 12 with. Take a minute to count. You should have 88 stitches all the way around and four chain two corners or 22 stitches across each side and then a chain two corner on every corner. That's what you had should have at the end of row 12. You can lay it down and pull out the corners, make it look a little square. Use the heat of your hand to give it sort of a, a little bit of a block. Great, and now we've got one more row of double crochet. We're gonna chain three right where we are. That counts as a double crochet. It counts right on top of this one, so this one is already accounted for. Do not be confused by that false stitch when you come back around. This is where your last double crochet will be. Double crochet into the next stitch. That brings you up to a corner. You work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into every single corner, just like the previous row, and work a single crochet in the top of every stitch all the way around. And at the end of row 13, you'll have 104 double crochets and four chain two spaces. And I'll see you there. When you get all the way back round to the end of row 13, join your yarn with a slip stitch to the top of your chain three, and you can snip your yarn and fasten off your background color. So that is it. For the background color, we have one more row to do and we are done the ba basic build of this square. You can take a minute and pull out the corners. At the end of this row, you should have a 104 stitches and four chain two corners, or if you're counting edges, 26 stitches across each side. So you can take a moment and weave in your short tail or you can work over top of it later like I do. It's time to work that granny shell border now. This is the border row, so grab your border color. For me, that's white. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Grab your square, pick any corner, join your yarn with a slip stitch in that corner space, chain three, this counts as a double crochet, and since we're working the granny shell border, we want to complete this corner by working two more double crochets to complete the shell. A shell is three double crochets all together. Chain two for the corner space, and work one more shell into that same space, or three double crochets. 
Now, if you've made these squares along with me, you know the drill. You're going to chain one coming out of the corner, that's your spacer. Count three stitches, find the fourth, and work a single shell into it. So three double crochets. Chain one for a spacer, skip three stitches, find the fourth, and work a shell. You're going to have six single shells across each side, because you're going to skip three stitches every single time and work a shell into the fourth. You're always going to chain one in between shells. When you get to the end, you'll always have two stitches left. That brings you up to a corner, and every corner is a shell, chain two, shell. You're going to work that little granny square pattern all the way around, and I'll see you at the end. Once you get back around to the beginning, and remember every single side should have six single shells separated by chains, one chain, and every corner should have a chain, a shell, chain two sh shell in it. <laughs> when you get back around to the beginning, make sure you include your last chain one, and then find the top of that chain three that you began the whole row with, and slip stitch to it. And that's it for the square. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, Grab your yarn needle and weave in any short tails that you may still have sticking out of your square. Now we're on to adding all the little features that make our travel trailer look like a little camper. We're going to start with the wheel, so you want a little bit of gray and your black yarn. This gray is going to be the center of our wheel. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And really simple, we're going to single crochet six single crochets into the circle, and that's pretty much it. Once you have six single crochets, grab the short tail, cinch it shut, and you can join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made. Fasten off and leave enough tail that you can sew the center of your wheel to your bigger wheel. You can also take a moment and weave that short tail in around the back of your little wheel center. So just pick up a few of the stitches across the back, weave it back and forth a few times and you can trim any excess. Now we're going to make the larger part of the wheel, so you want your black yarn. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. Chain one to secure it, and then chain two more, and that is a chain three. So that brings us up to the right height as a double crochet, but this isn't going to count as a double crochet. Into that ring you're going to double crochet twelve times. Kind of hard to see here, but I have 12 double crochets into my ring that does not include my chain three. Grab the short tail, cinch it shut, and you're going to skip over the top of your chain three and just join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. And that's your wheel. Leave a nice long chain, or a long tail I should say, because that's what you're going to sew your wheel to your square with. Take a moment and weave in the short tail, so this little guy right here, weave that in around the back. Now you're going to take your gray center and your black wheel, pair them up so that the gray center sits right in the center of your black wheel, thread up the long tail you left on your center piece, and then you're just going to sew all the way around. Because this is going to get sewn to our square, you can do this nice and sloppy style and just go all the way through the entire um, wheel piece. You don't have to pick up stitches or be neat and tidy. Just sew right through the whole thing. Keep your thumb on that center piece so that it doesn't move around. Pause every once in a while to make sure it's still in the middle, because you want it to look like a wheel. <laughs> once you've sewn the center part of your wheel onto your main wheel, you can just bring whatever's left of your yarn through to the back, 
and knot it off. So I like to knot it by sort of weaving it into another stitch and then creating a knot. You can do it however you're comfortable and you can weave in this short tail when you're done and that will secure your little tire. Next we're going to make this little tiny window piece that sits inside our travel trailer door. So you want your dark gray. We're going to begin with a slip stitch or I should say a slip knot. <laughs> Chain four, and once you have four chains, find the second chain from the hook, half double crochet into it, and then half double crochet into each of the next two. So you'll have three half double crochets in total. That is it. Snip your tail, leave at least enough that you can sew all the way around your little window piece. So maybe, I don't know, err on the side of more than less, say 9 to 12 inches, depending on how big your stitches are. Fasten off, and you can weave in the short tail across the back. Now we're going to make the slightly larger window that sits at the back of our travel trailer. So you still want your gray yarn, we're going to begin with a slip knot. We're going to chain six. And just like the other piece, we're going to find the second chain from the hook and half double crochet into it and each of the other chains. So that'll be five half double crochets. But don't fasten off because we're not finished. That's five half double crochets for row one, chain one, turn your work, and we're going to half double crochet in each stitch across. So in case you're confused, when you chain one for a turning chain, it never counts as a stitch, or at least very seldom does it count. So you can still use that first stitch right in front of you, you just ignore your turning chain altogether. You only don't use that first stitch if your turning chains count as a stitch and the turning chain in this case does not. So you can use every single stitch across and the last half double crochet is going to be worked into this little stitch that kind of wants to curl down the side so make sure you find it. You'll have five half double crochets in that second row and now you can cut yourself along a length of tail for sewing and fasten off and grab your yarn needle and weave in that short tail. One more little piece to make and that's our trailer hitch, so you still want your dark gray. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Chain four. Find the second chain from the hook and single crochet into it. And you can single crochet into the next two. Fasten off, leave enough tail for sewing, Weave in that little short tail and that is your tiny wee little trailer hitch for your tiny wee little travel trailer. And once you've got all of your pieces, we can start to put the whole thing together. We're going to begin with our wheel. So, take your square, grab your wheel, it should be all assembled now with your gray center in the middle and the black being the bigger part. And you're going to put your wheel, so you can see I have my wheel sitting, there's a little bit of it that curves up into the actual travel trailer. And the whole thing sits in, I'd say that's a good solid four or five stitches from the edge. You remember your travel trailer has <laughs> a hitch here and most of the weight is going to be sort of on that back tire, but there's always a little bit of overhang. So you can position your tire about where you like it, pin it if necessary, thread up your long tail with your yarn needle, and then we're going to use my little sort of stitch trick where you pick up a piece of a stitch across the top of your square, go through the whole piece of the stitch along the side of your applique, and just keep grabbing a piece of a stitch and the whole stitch on the applique, and this keeps your stitches from showing through to the back, so nothing messy on the back. Put it down every once in a while if you're holding it like me to make sure you haven't moved it out of place and then continue sewing. And that's how we're going to put on every single little applique for this little project.
Once you've finished sewing on your applique, you can make a tiny little knot at the end. So I've just knotted my yarn through a side of a stitch. Tiny little knot, and then you can weave the rest of your tail back and forth through some of the stitches across the top of whatever matching color piece is there. So in this case, it's a black tail, and I'm weaving it across the stitches, a little hard to see, of my little black applique. I'm going to weave it back and forth through some of those stitches. It will completely disappear because it's the same color, and it will also ensure that it doesn't come undone. There. You can trim any little excess if you have little, little tiny spiky bits sticking up. That's the wheel on. Now, we're going to put on the back window. We're going to leave the door to last because it just takes a little bit of chaining. I'll get to that when we get there. But you want to grab your larger window piece, and just like we did with the tire, you're going to decide where you want it. On this one, I have it sort of sitting in the middle of the white piece, but towards the back, just a bit above the tire and to the back of the trailer. Same thing, you can thread up your tail with your yarn needle, and using pieces of the stitches of your square, so not all the way through the square, just the top bits of loops. So all the way around, put a little knot in, and then weave in your tail, trim any excess, and that is your travel trailer window in. You want to do your trailer hitch next. That is the smaller of the last two rectangles you have left, so that's the single crochet piece you made. It's the tiny one. Same thing, thread up your tail and you can sew it to the very front bottom corner of your travel trailer opposite your wheel. We've got our trailer hitch on, we've got our little wheel on, and our back window. All that's left to do is the door. We're going to make the door frame first. And I'm going to give you a nice close up here of what I've done. So we're going to chain through our fabric. We're going to put surface chains around the edge of our door frame, and you can see that we work all the way through. But because it's a nice little neat straight line on the back, it doesn't really matter too much. So we're going to work some surface chains. You want your dark gray color, and we're going to begin our chains three pink stitches in. So these sit sort of partially in between the stitches. Three in from the edge, and we're going to go all the way up to the top of what was row um, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. So rows eight and nine of the trailer are not touched, so our little um, chained frame goes across the top of that row seven. So about five chain or five stitches wide, and then we come all the way back down again. So there's about five stitches in between the door frame. And I'm telling you that so that you have sort of a visual to go with while you're working your surface chains. We're going to put the surface chain frame on first before we put in our window so that you can make sure that your window is centered in the middle of your door. So grab your hook, grab your gray yarn. We're going to begin with a slip knot, but make it nice and loose. So nice and loose, you don't want it to be tight on your hook because we're going to feed this through from the back of our fabric. So, we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to count in one, two, three, three stitches. And I'm going to put my hook right through the gray stitches, so anywhere between there, somewhere between the third and fourth stitch of the travel trailer. Place my big loop on my hook and pull it through. You don't want to pull it all the way through because you don't want that knot coming through. And this takes a little bit of dexterity. You're going to try and feed your yarn, so ignore that little short tail, you're going to feed your yarn from underneath your fabric. So this does take a little feeling around. And you're just going to work simple chains, so you slip your hook back through the fabric, all the way through the fabric. And the first couple are always a little tricky. Grab that yarn, gently pull it back through your fabric and up through that chain. If you have to reposition your hook, so that your, your chain is always laying flat against your fabric. You can do that. And try to go up in a straight line. So keep 
looking at your blanket and making sure that your hook is going up in a straight line, it doesn't matter if some of your loops are really tall or short, as long as they're not too tight, because you don't want to pull this fabric out of alignment, and make sure that they're always laying flat against the fabric. So it's going to look something like this. You're going to go up again, keeping a nice straight line, grab that yarn, pull it back up through, and then still going in a straight line, poke your, your hook through your fabric. It doesn't matter if you're going through a stitch or a space between stitches, as long as you've got a nice little straight frame going. And you want to do that all the way up to the top of that seventh row. Once you're up to the top of that seventh row of your travel trailer, you're going to sort of turn and you're going to work through the tops of five of those stitches. So they should be pretty easy to see. This gives you a nice straight edge. Again, you want to try and keep those loops a little on the loose side, not too loose, but certainly not tight because you want to keep a nice straight stitch going and you don't want it to pucker all of your hard work. So I'm going to go across five. So there's the top of my frame and then I'm just going to turn and I'm going to work straight down. So just like we did going up, I'm going to work in a nice straight line all the way down and I'm going to put my last stitch almost before my gray line here. We're going to pull the last stitch through the gray line. But I'll show you that when we get there. So now just work a nice straight even stitch all the way down. Once you're almost all the way down your other side to the bottom, pull up on that last loop Take your hook out and you're going to actually pull it. So we're going to insert a hook from the back now up to the front, somewhere underneath it in a nice, try to be as straight as possible. Grab that loop and pull it down to the back, just like that. Flip your work over. I'm just going to zoom in here. So you're nice, your loop and your hook are through to the back. You're going to chain once more through that loop. Then you're going to snip your yarn and fasten off. And you can fasten off nice and tight because you did that extra loop on the other side. So just give it a nice tight tug. You can weave in your ends. And if I zoom back out, you can see that we've got this sweet little chained frame running all the way around the outside of our travel trailer or on the right side of the square and we have a nice neat and tidy little line running across the back. You should have two little tails left. You can grab your yarn needle and weave them in. And then when you're done with that, you can take your little door window, place it somewhere nice and neatly inside the frame of your door and sew it down. And once you've got your little door window all sewn down, you can weave in the ends across the top, trim any excess and you're done. There's your very own little travel trailer square, or two. <laughs> and there you have it, a travel trailer blanket square. I love this one so much. It's just so cute and I just, it makes me want to take off on a road trip. <laughs> and that's it for this week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed making this block along with us. And if you'd like a written copy of this pattern, it's available for sale in our Etsy shop. You'll find the link in the description box down below. And to everyone who's popped in and done some shopping, thank you so very much. It really helps us out here on the show. We will see you really soon on the Dated Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, enjoy wherever you are, and we'll see you soon. Bye.